and welcome to part 3 in the series of linear model selection and regularization. So, so far we've covered variable selection methods based on what I call brute force, which try to find a subset of variables that try to predict better or try to reduce the error with the least number of variables. But today we're going to do something more fancy. The idea is the following, instead of trying to decide in advance what variables are the best, I'm going to introduce a tuning parameter and try the data to decide what's the best optimal value of the tuning parameter that reduces the number of predictors. So instead of learning in advance, I'm going to learn in retrospect. And I'm going to introduce a couple of methods which are very popular these days. One is called rich regression and the other is called the lasso. You can go back to my video on training and gradient descent and we discuss this idea that when you have just one parameter, basically minimizing the error is like trying to find a minimum in this parabolic growth. So what if we have to a couple of parameters? In this case, we have a surface and if we have n parameters, we have a hypersurface. And the idea is instead of looking at this as a surface, we could try to look at this as this error level set. So ideally, if we start at this point in the training process, we would like to end up something more or less here. And this is the least square solution. And it is the, the value that minimizes the difference between the predictor, um, sorry, the, the prediction and the linear combination of the predictors. Let's do a mock example. So let's create some data. X1 and X2 are random numbers. And we are going to create this linear combination. So this is the intercept. This is the slope for the first predictor. And this is the slope for the second predictor. Also, let's add some noise with zero mean and, and one standard deviation. And let's take a look at linear regression. So in this case, what we can see here is something strange. So despite the fact that the initial slopes were three and one, the predicted ones are 3.5 and 0.14. And the second thing that is uh, striking is that while the first slope is significant, this, this value is not significant. So basically, linear regression is telling us that this parameter is no longer there. So we cannot distinguish between this slope and zero, essentially. If we take a look at the residual standard error, there is something interesting here. So the error is even lower than the real one. And this is the problem. So the problem is that least squares is trying to minimize the error so hardly that sometimes it's going too far. And the idea is that when, when we have different slopes, sometimes the rich get, gets richer and the poor, well, you know the story. So how can we reduce that? How can we solve these sort of problems? So one way to do this is called L2 regularization. The two comes from the idea that in, instead of just minimizing this function, we're going to minimize the, the sum of all the parameters squared. And we're going to introduce this tuning parameter that we are going to call the penalty. In the mathematical jargon, this is called a Lagrange multiplier. In one dimension, this doesn't make any sense. Actually, if this is the parabola that I've mentioned before, and this is the least square solution, regularization would constrain the parameter, for instance, between minus one and one. And this is crazy because instead of having the, the, the best solution ever, we have this solution, which is basically constrained by this parameter. This is called a shrinking. And this, as I was saying, this is not very interesting and not very meaningful in one dimension, but it is in two dimensions. So in two dimensions, we have two parameters and essentially restricting the sum of these parameters is like the equation of a circle, which would be something like this. Okay. In this case, instead of just constraining in, in this interval, we can take any value, any parameter, any combination of parameters that fits into the cycle. And if we go back to this idea of gradient descent, and you can see that the level set are increasing in the highest direction is like this. So in this direction, the, the error is not changing much. So this is the, the direction in which the error is minimized the most. So if we project this, this minimum least squares solution into this direction, the overlap with this, with this circle is going to be around here. So the idea of rich regression is basically trying to be the closest that we can to the error function and to be constrained to this circle. So you can see the effect of the penalty, the, the parameter here. So you can see when the parameter is zero, we are at this cross and this cross is the least square solution. But when we increase the penalty, basically we're moving to this direction. You can see that if the lambda, the, the constraint is too large, we are not changing anything because we can have the least square solution inside the circle. But if we increase the lambda, then we have, we have reduced a little bit the parameters. So the optimal solution would be here. And if we go too far, we are shrinking the parameters to zero, which is not very interesting, but it's a consequence of this penalty. So let's try to apply this with a very simple example. Remember our mock function. This y was a function of well, x1 and x2, and these are the slopes. 
And now instead of using simple linear regression, I'm going to use rich regression. The order to do that, I'm going to use this, this library glmnet, and this parameter alpha is going to be zero, and I will explain later what, what's the meaning of that. I'm going to try different penalties from 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the 1, and I'm going to use 20 values in order to evaluate that. And I'm going to use cross-validation in order to find the optimal one. If you run this, then cross-validation tells you that the optimal lambda is 0.078, which is not relevant here, but let me show you the results. So this is the idea. So this is the plot of the, of the result. These are the coefficients, the betas. Okay, this is beta 1 related to x1, and this is beta 2 related to x2. So these are the exact coefficients. Remember, the, the one, one coefficient was 3 and the other was 1. And if, you, if we do the simple linear, relation, linear regression, then we would obtain something like this. Well, remember, this the coefficients were 3.6 more or less, and the second coefficient was almost zero. But what if we do th this rich regression? Here you can see that we have some uh, shrinking, and the idea of shrinking is that we are moving from the raw estimation to the real estimation. So we are shifting up the linear estimation of, the, of one of the coefficients and shifting down the other coefficients. So these are closer to the to the real parameters, and this is a consequence of this uh, Lagrange multiplier that we are using. We have an example in higher dimensions, and you can see that increasing the penalty lambda is basically shrinking all the parameters. If you go too far, all the parameters go to zero, which is not the thing that you want. But the interesting thing is that probably there is some somewhere in the middle in which the parameters are more meaningful. Again, remember this bias-variance trade-off, so you have to be careful be because Increasing the lambda means that you're somehow forcing all the parameters to be into this cycle, into this hypersphere in higher dimensions. And the optimal thing that you can you can find with cross-validation is this optimal situation in which you have controlled this trade-off. The other popular method out there for, for regularizing the solution is called the lasso, or least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. The idea is that, that is that we are trying to minimize least squares constraint to the sum of the absolute values. So instead of having a square here, we have just a one. And mathematically, this means that instead of having the equation of a circle, we have this sort of a square center at zero. So as you could think, okay, so what? Is this just a matter of changing an exponent and the change of the shape? So why is this relevant? So let me show you what's happening here. Remember this hypersurface, which is the error function, and these are the level sets. So this is the optimal least square solution, and now we are trying to regularize in order to, to introduce uh, some penalty and, and not let the rich get, get richer. So the idea is the following. If you move in the gradient descent direction, the optimal solution would be here, which is that the, the intersection between this gradient descent direction and the error function. Okay? The problem is that now we are constraining this cycle so the optimal solution would be something like here. So this is regularization, okay? So instead of using this point, we're going to use this point, which is closest to the line, but over this cycle. But what happens with the lasso? The problem with the lasso is that we have to restrict all the parameters to fit into this uh, straight line. And now we want to be closest to the, er to the minimum error function, then we are going to be here. So this is the closest point to this error function that is over this line, this constraint line. And what's the difference between the point for L2 and the point for L1 regularization? The point is that this is over the axis, so beta 2 is actually zero. So this is a kind of magic because this is automatic variable selection. We are setting beta 2 equals zero without doing anything. So again, take a look at a high dimension data set. Here you can see that increasing lambda, some of the parameters are dropping to zero. So here you can see that this line drops here, probably these variables too and then we increase lambda, and then we are dropping this black line to zero, and so on and so forth. So basically, we're selecting between all the inputs automatically and without doing any kind of correlation or iterative process. And that's why the lasso is so popular these days. So which one is better? So rich regression do not remove explanatory variables. Basically, we are just moving around this cycle, but all the variables are still there. So in that sense, as a method for feature selection, lasso wins. The problem is that when the coefficients do not vary dramatically, we are forcing the lasso to, to move the parameters too much, and this is the idea here. So basically, L2 just shifts, shifts the, the parameters a little bit along this line, but the lasso is moving the parameters too long. So maybe the lasso is not so good when all the betas are almost the same. And overall, the same message as usual. There is no universal method that dominates over the other. And maybe we don't need to choose, and actually Trevor Hasty, which is 
this wonderful mathematician and expert in machine learning introduced this, this idea of the elastic net. The idea is taking the, the best of both worlds and we're going to use this parameter alpha and if alpha equals one, you can see that this is the same as rich regression because we are dropping this term. And if, uh, sorry, if alpha equals zero, no, sorry, alpha equals one. And if alpha equals zero, we are taking the lasso because you're dropping this term. Okay, so with cross-validation, actually, we can tune not only the penalty, but also the weight, uh, the relative weight of both methods.